How's it going, everybody? This is Dave Meltzer. We're going to be here for the next two hours talking pro wrestling. We've got Brian Alvarez, Figure Four Weekly, and we're going to be taking your calls and your emails. Uh, I've been, you know, this weekend I've been spending talking to pretty much people on every side of this situation. If you've got any questions, I'll do my best to answer what's exactly going on with WCW. I guess uh, Eric Bischoff is actually going to be on Nitro tonight via phone. I don't know what that means at all, but I guess we will find out. Um, if they think it's going to make a difference in ratings, uh, that ain't going to happen. But um, judging from the response I got, the buy rate for last night's show was not good. Um, it's a good show, I thought. I don't know, Brian, what do you think of the show? I, I mean, I was like watching the show, and it was, I mean, it was so depressing for so many reasons, which I'm sure we'll talk about today. But I mean, the guys, they were working so damn hard. I mean, even not the announcers. I was sitting here watching. Not all of them. Not all of them. Well, for the most part. I mean, Actually, there were. Lex Luke and Buff Bagwell. That does not count because <laughs> I don't even consider them wrestlers with the company at this point. But um, yeah. I mean, anyone who has ever cared in the past worked their ass off last night. And even I was sitting there watching Tony Schiavone and uh, Scott Hudson, and like I was going, you know, Tony Schiavone, he's doing a hell of a job. I mean, this is a guy who's been in this company forever, and he's got to know that you know this is it. I mean, what is what is Tony Schiavone going to do? He's not going to replace well, Jerry well, he Lawler. Well, wa he wants to get a, he wants to get a job with the WWF. I'm sure he does, and I'm sure that's <laughs> why he was trying so damn hard. But in the back of his mind, he has to know that, you know, what are the chances really? And I mean, I mean, I everyone know. worked hard, and I mean, even like um, I guess Scott Steiner's back was uh, so screwed up, and I guess that's why they kept him off uh, Nitro on Thunder last week. But I mean, it was affecting his foot; he couldn't put weight on his foot. And I just heard a story today, and it was like, I'm watching this thing last night, and I, could, I couldn't even have, you know, it was just like any other Scott Steiner match. So he got it, looked, it, it, looked like, it looked like a typical Scott Steiner match, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess he was in just um, so much pain backstage, just back totally just gone out. And he went out there and worked and did a hell of a job, and everybody worked hard. And, I mean, the most depressing thing was, here you got this Jamie or Jason Jett coming out here. Nobody knows him. Nobody cares. He works his ass off. And, like, by the end of the match... The crowd's getting into this guy, and, I mean, he's one of those guys where you look at him and you go, if, if this company had some legs, this is a guy that, you know, someday they could build around, and he might become something. He had uh, O'Hare and Palumbo just squashing could, could, Luger and Bagwell. Who, that's, the stuff, that's the stuff they should have done a long time ago. Oh, I know. It's, it's stuff like, you know, why did but, you guys But, but you know, I mean, ago? the reason, you, you know, Brian, just in case, because, in case people don't know, I mean, that match was supposed to go eight minutes, and Luger and Bagwell just laid down right away. Well... So, I mean, it was supposed to not be, like, that much of a squash. I mean, but they did it to it was, make... um, you know, they did the, the young job, guys were they... supposed to go over. The young guys were supposed to go over, and then the, the older guys threw a, t threw a tam tantrum. I mean, there was, there was fear that they would not even come back for that match when they got the finish. Because in the afternoon, when they were going over the show, and they were supposed to lose the match in eight minutes, they were crying and complaining, and the way they left the building, there were people thinking that they weren't going to come back. And then when they came back, they... You know, went into business for themselves, lied down right away, and they wouldn't get out of the ring. And it, it was so it was so unprofessional the way they did it too. I mean, it's like, I mean, you had Bagwell Bagwell selling it like um, he'd been shot with a rifle, and he just lays there. And they go to like three video packs, and they come back, and this guy's still in the ring selling it. I mean, I can understand selling a finish and just laying there for a long time and having to be taken out, but he was selling it in such a way that he was turning it into like a cartoon, and it was. It it really didn't do anything for Palumbo and O'Hare the way it was done, and they will. Uh, well, that was the idea. Yeah, I mean, that was the Kevin Nash way of doing jobs. What are these guys going to do now? Hopefully, absolutely nothing. Those guys did not. I tell you what, if if I was them, I and Luger, you know, for for all the faults that Luger has, I won't say this about Bagwell at all, but for all the faults Luger has, he's been a pretty good businessman for almost his entire career, and this was not his smartest move of all because Luger. You know, Luger already has one major strike against him with Vince McMahon, because, and maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe he just figures there's no way he can go to Vince McMahon anyway, and um, that, and, he, and he's trying to save himself because of the inevitable someone who starts something new, and Luger can be a part of it because he was, you know, once a star. But God, if you know, I mean, if I'm starting something new, <laughs> those guys are guys I wouldn't touch. Yeah, that's how I would look at it. You know, like. You know, here it is, all these other guys, you know, they won't put anyone over. I mean, they make, you know, the right way. They made that one clear. They're hard to deal with. They don't work, you know, I don't say don't work. You know, Bagwell works decently hard. Luger doesn't work hard at all. And um, and they got nothing to offer as far as 
you know, name anymore. Mm-hmm. But anyway, it's, you know, I, I thought um, there's a lot of good stuff on that show as far as presentation of Newtown. I mean, you know, Shane Helms, they, they're trying to do something with him. Um, you know, Stasiak, even though it's ill-conceived and it's the wrong guy, again, you know, they, they you know, at least it's trying to <laughs> get tried, a new guy over. But... Yeah, they, oh, they tried. God. It was a bad match. Romeo, Romeo was tremendous. Rey Mysterio Jr. and Billy Kidman were fantastic in that match. Yeah. Yeah, and that was, that was, to me, that was the show stealer. I would say so, yeah. Just yeah. trying to look back at everything else here. I mean, I liked, um... I like Shane Helms and Chavo. They gave him a lot of time, but there was just something missing there. And I'm not sure if it was, um, I don't know if it was a crowd or what, and I don't even know what they chanted, but I it was watched boring. that match, and right before Shane Helms risked his life with his dive to the outside, there was this chant starting up. And everyone in the room boring. with me thought that they were chanting boring, and I was going, They were. They, they cannot were. be chanting that. They absolutely they cannot were. be chanting that. And they if they were. were, then I'm ashamed of all those fans. But uh, They were, and you should be ashamed. Oh my God! I mean, there was a little something missing from the match, but there was nothing missing that would um, justify anybody chanting "boring" at those two guys. And um, I mean, the other thing I have to say is um, Dusty and Dustin Rhodes versus Ric Flair and Jeff Jarrett. I was I had so much fun watching that match, and it wasn't like I would ever want to see Dusty Rhodes in a pay per view semi main event again, or even as much Ric Flair. But uh, for that one night, I thought that was pretty damn awesome. I wouldn't say all. I mean, it was good for the building, and I thought it was good because it's the final pay-per-view of the company. And you know what? Ric Flair should be on the final pay-per-view of the company, and, and what the hell. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's Florida. You know, the company's done. Why not give the people Dusty Rhodes? I mean, he, he, you, know, you, know, you know what was really sad to me, though? Is you've got one guy who's 52 and one guy who's 55, and all of these modern wrestling fans, theoretically modern wrestling fans, they care more about these guys because of their feud... That ended in like 1988. <laughs> that anything that that anything from the last 13 years, that any of these, you know, the Lex Luger's who are the next generation stars, or any of the current guys that are out there like DDP and Steiner, and people were leaving the building during the DDP Steiner match, which was a good match, and they were leaving because they'd already seen Flair and Dusty, and probably more Dusty than Flair. Yeah. And it's like it's just so. It, it's sad. I mean, I, I'm glad those guys got a big pop. For you know, for themselves, and and you know they they were great in their day and all that, but or whatever they were exactly. <laughs> I don't know what I would say about Dusty. One of the things about Dusty and Flair too that um, there's a reason that I don't mind seeing them um, on occasion, and that is when you have someone like Lex Luger or you have someone like Hulk Hogan who is old and far past whatever prime they may have had. They go in the ring, they do nothing, and it's so obvious that they're doing nothing, and it's so horrendous. But Ric Flair and Dusty Rhodes are so great at going in there and knowing how to do nothing to the point where it actually looks like something. I mean, those fans no, are going they crazy they... for nothing. They were no, but it was the for... trademark. It's the trademark Dusty Nothing that they spent their whole lives watching, and the yeah. trademark Ric Flair bumping for Dusty. I mean, it was exactly what they... You know, like, Flair didn't do his flip. You know, Flair really didn't... Do he didn't do a lot. A lot. Well, he did. He, he did a chop did, and he took some bumps and. He did. He did a few things. But yeah, you're right. He didn't do a lot. And Dusty did almost nothing. But it was. But it was what the people wanted. They wanted and to they see. And they knew how to do it. Yeah. Well, they wanted to see Dusty do the one thing and then the other thing, and they wanted Rick to bump for him, and they got what they wanted. And they didn't want much else from that match. And what else do you want? You really don't. You know, they, did, they certainly didn't want to see Dustin and uh, Jeff Jarrett at all. Oh yeah. Yeah. They just were there because the other guys couldn't do this, you know, weren't going to be doing a single match. And, it's good, and it was good that way because Dusty and Ric Flair in a single match, if they had gone eight minutes, it would not have been as much fun. Yeah. I mean, the way I look at it, it could not have come off any better than it did. I agree. So, anyway, can't go wrong there. We, we are avoiding the big subject, which is the future of wrestling. Yes. Any any thoughts? I, I don't even know what to say. I mean, it's... uh. It's just so depressing to watch this pay-per-view, and I mean, the whole thing is like, I'm sitting here thinking, okay, next Wednesday, there's going to be no Thunder, and the Monday after that, there's going to be no Nitro, and it's going to be, uh, you know, Raw and SmackDown and some EMLL, and what else is there? I mean, where, yeah. I felt well, so we'll bad. Well, watching the EMLL. <laughs> the hardest working guys on this pay-per-view are so screwed. They are screwed. Oh, God. Where, was, where is Jamie Noble was... going to go? I was, well, he wasn't even on this paper, but you know, that's the, the tragedy of all this is that I think that if you look at the guys 
who ruined the company, okay, some of them, okay, Eric Bischoff, you know, and he maybe, you know, whatever he does and makes the save and all that tonight, you know, whatever, but Eric Bischoff still has got to be high on the list of, the, you know, if you look at people who ruined the company, Bischoff will, some, Eric Bischoff is a guy, he's going to make it in life. I mean, if you were around him, you know, he's going to sell a TV show, he's got the right friends, he's going to get a job, you know what I mean? And he's fine, okay? Brad Siegel is going to be a big-time executive in television forever, and he just made one horrible decision after another. Now, Russo, I don't know what's going to happen to Russo. Frankly, I don't care. He's, you know, he, he, can I interrupt for just one second? Yes. I just got to get this off my chest. My entire life, I have never wanted to punch anybody, and I've never wanted to punch anybody in wrestling. I mean, as many horrible decisions as I saw, and as many horrible matches as I saw, and as many horrible Hulk Hogan matches and Hogan screwing over people... And Big Show making certain comments on certain radio shows. I've never wanted to punch anybody, but I want to punch Vince Russo right in the face. He's the only person ever, and I think that no one else in my life I will ever want to punch, but I really want to punch Vince Russo. Really? I mean, he, he killed this thing. He really did. Yeah, I think well, he killed this thing. It wasn't just him. It, I it mean, wasn't you know, just he was... him, and I know that there were a lot of things that um, happened, and I, I've been writing this whole thing on... Uh, the last six years at WCW, and, you know, there's so many mistakes, and I'm looking back at things that, you know, we wrote in 1998 when they had, like, 13 straight sellouts, and that same week we're writing, this thing's going to go downhill. And I understand all that, but there was a chance that it could be salvaged, and um, he uh, he killed That's it. That's true. That's true. When so he was there's done, no he question in my mind that this thing was totally salvageable when he took it over, and when he was done with it, it was not. Yeah. And you know it was it was um and the thing that was, year. he didn't he didn't care enough to look at it and look at the guys and really look at it realistically and realize that what he was doing didn't work. It was like, you know what I'm doing does work, but nobody else gets it, and uh he was wrong well, you know the other thing is is when the you know when the numbers go down, you know I don't know you know the other the other thing is also is is that if you look at the you know if they had lost. Let's just say ten million dollars last year instead of sixty. Everything would be different. I think that you know, but you know the other thing now. You know, you know all of this stuff of, of all that. It the fact is is that the, the, the history. If you really think about this, the history of, of the business of professional wrestling, in many ways, is not determined by anything that has to do with professional wrestling. It has to do with outside forces, and I think this is like the key part of it. Is that you know what? If they were doing a three rating, Jamie Kellner or a three point five, and if they were doing great business at arena shows, and let's just say they were only losing a few million dollars a year, or good business at arena shows, or maybe even big business, Jamie Kellner may have come in and just said, "I want to redo these networks, and wrestling doesn't fit into, into my thought process." And it still would, you know. Now, now, if it was a real hot product, yeah, these other networks would want to snap it up. Yeah, that's and the, the fact thing. that the, 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 yeah, you're right. Okay, the fact that these n networks don't want to snap it up. Is because of the feeling that professional wrestling is this fad thing. The fad was two years ago. Who wants to get in at the end of a fad? You want to be in on the big bottom floor and create your new fad. And you know, for all of the fact that we can cite that the ratings of professional wrestling were destroyed in the last year, and that even decently done wrestling um, on that station should be able to do a 2.5 to a three, um, you know, even though it's not and it could be rebuilt. The fact is, is that you got a guy running the network now, all of the networks, all of Turner's networks, who's just not interested in it, and yeah. and and you've got a a business community that's just going like, you know, wrestling's the wrestling's the old fad. It's not the new fad, so why get in the wrestling business now? It's really. I think the whole thing is they see that it's the old fad because of where WCW has gone. Absolutely. I mean, if it, WCW is getting promoting... the ratings that we're getting right now, and Nitro is getting like a four. You know, which he was getting, I might add, before uh, Russo came in. Uh, it might be uh, bought up by another network if Turner didn't want it. Fox might be willing to take a gamble. You know, other networks might. They might not have got rid of it all, but it's to the point now. I mean, the pay-per-view buy rates are so pathetic. No one's going to the shows. No one's watching the TV. That uh, I mean, there's nothing. There's nothing left. Well, the pay-per-view buy rates is, is really is really what's killed it because that's the one thing. As long, if you had done like big money on pay-per-view all the time, you would at least, you know, you'd at least be in the game. I mean, a lot of those losses, a great deal of the losses of the company, um, would have been negated by good house show attendance and, and pay-per-views. Uh, you know, 
But um, you know, we were talking about like you know guys that are, uh, you know, the guys you know we go on like like Nash. You know, sooner or later we all know, no matter what anyone in the WF says, that Nash is winding up in the WF when this is all said and done. Okay, mm-hmm. and he's one of like the main guys. Now Luger, Luger may be out of luck, but a lot of these guys um, that were were the reasons that the company never progressed and didn't put over the younger guys. A lot of them, you know, and even with Luger, Luger doesn't need to work ever again, I don't think. I think oh, Luger's no. in pretty good shape financially. Yeah. So you've got all these guys. Sting, you know, made his millions. And, um, you know, whether he goes to Vince or not, he's in great shape financially. He doesn't have to go anywhere he doesn't want to go. Hulk Hogan doesn't have to go anywhere he doesn't want to go. He's never going to suffer for this. He's had his great career. And all of these young guys, if you talk about like a, Sh- a Shannon Moore or a Shane Helms, or Jamie Noble, um, probably not all Kazayashi, not all of them, but probably most of them are screwed. Yeah. And it's and you know it's just I, it's what we could, you know the, the you know and and people that work behind the scenes you know the ones that really cared about the business that unfortunately saw the booking go astray they're screwed too. Yeah. So that's what happens when companies close, unfortunately. Um, I'm just trying to think if there's anything else to add to all this. Um, well, we'll talk about uh, WWF and Jerry Lawler. I mean, Vince McMahon does not hold a grudge, does he? Oh, no, of course not. Uh, they uh, wanted, uh, Randy Hales wanted to bring Jerry Lawler back. Actually, he was pressured by WMC to bring Jerry Lawler back on Saturday. And uh, Vince McMahon and WWF said, well, if you do that, we're pulling all our guys. And they did. Pulling all their guys from that particular show or... The deal's done. Oh, no, the, the deal's done. I mean, I mean, Memphis Championship Wrestling and Power Pro were separate things, so all of those guys are going to stay in Memphis and work for Memphis Championship, but they're not going to work anymore for Power Pro. And they're pulled from, Rand, from Randy Hales' television. And, I mean, the thing with that is is those guys, it's kind of like you're, you know, you're, okay, great, they're going to screw Jerry Lawler, and in the process, these guys had an hour weekly television show to learn how to work live television, which is very important, especially right. if you're going to go to the WWF. It was a great, you know, training grounds because it's a live TV show that actually people watch as opposed to in, in some of the territories, including Ohio Valley. You know, not, not to knock it, but they have a taped television show. Uh, so, you know, the pressure is, is different, and then it should be because those guys aren't ready for live TV, or some of them aren't. And also, the Ohio Valley show is watched by a very small audience. This Memphis show is an institution, and the ratings are pretty good. And so these guys are, you know, really, you know, they, you know they're getting the beginnings of, very minor celebrityhood and things like that, which you know is something that you could at least get. It's good to get a dose of before you get hit on raw, so to speak. And they're not, you know, um, live interviews, you know, to build up matches each week, build up programs, you know, all the things that you need to be taught. And they're pulling that because the station wanted Lawler on because Lawler's an institution on the station. And it's like, okay, Lawler doesn't have to work for the WWF, but you know, why is him being there? You know, Lawler. Because he's there, you know, we don't, we, none of our talent can appear. I mean, you know, what's that? Yeah. Especially a show, a localized television show in the middle of Memphis, Tennessee. You know what I mean? And it's not like they don't know that Jerry Lawler means double the ratings for that show. If anything, they should be happy Jerry Lawler is on the show for two reasons. Number one is that these guys can learn. How, I mean, there is nobody that you can watch interviews except for maybe Flair. Maybe Rock, I don't know. I mean, Jerry Lawler is one of the greatest interviews in this entire business, and it's great for these guys to be in there in that same studio while Lawler is cutting a promo and learn how Lawler does it, if they can imitate him a little bit or learn from him. And also, in the ring, you know, I mean, Jerry Lawler does nothing in the ring, but he does know shortcuts, you know, and there's, there's, there's little bits to be learned. But also, Jerry Lawler being on that show means that all of these guys are being watched by more people. And that should be, you know, and the television station contract is up for renewal, and, you know, with the nature of the mentality of wrestling being yesterday's fad, this is an NBC station. And, you know, you want to, I think it's important to keep your ratings up. And if Lawler being on the show is going to help keep your ratings up, plus Lawler has a great relationship with the station, if that makes the difference between, you know, getting a renewal and not getting a renewal, why would the WWF stand in the way of Lawler being on the show? I mean, it, it's, I just, I, I find it so petty. But are you surprised? No. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> I'm just saying. Oh, let's see. What other stuff happened over the weekend? Um, I'm just trying to think. Uh, <laughs> it's pretty much all the 
The WCBSF, I mean, um, on Friday, we, you know, we said this unofficially, but in fact it's been in the papers in the New York Times today and trade journals. They have officially canceled wrestling on TBS, TNT, uh, all the Turner networks. It was a decision by Jamie Kellner, one of his first decisions. You know, he's also getting rid of Buffy and the, ba the Vampire Slayer, which I think is like the number one show on WB. What's the deal with that? Did you hear about that? No. Yeah. I don't know what the whole story is. I just heard that, because that, that was a shocking decision that he made, too. Um, and... You know, but his first decision was was to dump it. Um, he has never liked wrestling, so I mean that's the basic gist. And I I think it's really sad in many ways that quote. I think that you I know you saw it, Brian. The one oh, about yeah. it's really sad as a wrestling fan after all these years that that the whole reason that this thing is getting dumped is because they think that it's not highbrow enough for their networks as opposed to. If this thing was failing in the ratings, like, say, the XFL is, when NBC dumps the XFL, they got nobody to blame except that the people didn't watch it. But when you have a show where, and, and you know what, if they were producing good wrestling week in and week out and the people didn't watch it, I mean, I'd be very sad. I'd be maybe even sadder than I am now. But I would have to accept the economic reality of the fact that the people, you know, enter, it's the entertainment world, and for whatever reason, the people chose not to watch. But this is a product that was killed because... The people in charge destroyed the ratings that would have been a lot better. And even with destroyed ratings, the ratings are still competitive. On The Monday and Wednesday ratings are competitive with what that network would, would do um, on those nights without the show. But, you know, they're, but, they're, but, it does, but it doesn't matter to them because advertisers, you know, advertisers won't spend the money. And I, that, so in that case, here's it's still quote. an economic reality. Wrestling also clashes with the upscale adult audience that TBS and TNT are aggressively seeking to attract. But you know the other thing also, they're looking um, for TBS and TNT to get Seinfeld and Friends reruns, you know, the big contracts there. Yeah. And, you know, that's, you know, in the grand scheme of things, wrestling doesn't match up to that either. Basically, this is the situation, and I want to get this over with. Um, there ba there's, there's pretty much many different ways that this thing can turn out as far as the future of the various wrestlers and things like that. Um, because... There is no implication of having to provide, you know, in the original deal with uh, WWF, because WWF nearly bought the company several months ago, and what held up was the fact that uh, TBS and TNT wanted to maintain that Monday and Wednesday programming, um, and in fact, that was the reason that they chose Vince McMahon over, or, or in the process of choosing Vince McMahon over Eric Bischoff with the belief that Vince McMahon was more likely to give them good ratings for that programming on Monday and Wednesday uh, than Eric Bischoff was and but Viacom has an exclusive contract with uh, the WWF when they you know did that big deal that big money deal so and they nixed the idea that um, that they would be providing programming for an opposition cable network so that's what happened there now because there's no proviso about providing programming for an opposition cable network that brought the WWF back into the deal they've been negotiating with WWF most likely, unless something happened today that, that changed this, which is possible, uh, the most likely scenario is that Vince McMahon and the WWF would be buying WCW. The decision, or as far as the final thing, will probably go down anywhere between two or three days or at most maybe 10 to 15 days. But it's going to probably happen in the next week or two. Um, and what they will do... There's no final decision on what exactly they can do. They could, uh, if they buy it, what they would be buying is the logo. They could buy the contracts of the wrestlers. They could also not buy the contracts of the wrestlers because it's basically a fire sale. Um, there's really no other, if they sell it to the WWF, it's going to be on WWF's terms. And if they don't want to buy the contracts, they won't, or they could work a deal where TBS pays off, say like a Bill Goldberg contract. They'll pay off the big Bill Goldberg contract. Um, or, or a lot of it, and Vince will only take some of it, but get the rights, and they'll assign Bill Goldberg to work for Vince McMahon while still having to pay his contract. Or they could make some sort of a deal where they offer guys money to get out of their contracts to be free agents, and then Vince can negotiate with them individually. Vince could theoretically operate WCW as a separate entity uh, to build for a promotion versus promotion thing and keep a lot of the guys. It is a possibility it would be more likely for this to happen if he were to fold the XFL because it would only give him two things that he's working on instead of three. And from what everyone says, he's totally at, at you know with no free time to do three. He can't do three. 
And logically, that would be the logical thing for him. We could say that would even be the logical thing for him to do, would be to get rid of the XFL, operate WCW as a separate entity, rebuild WCW, because if there is nothing else, he does have expertise in making professional wrestling stars and, and running a wrestling organization, um, if he would choose to do so. But that would be, the worst part of that is that for Vince McMahon to do that, that would be an admission of defeat with the XFL. And business-wise, no question that's the right that's the right thing because I, I will tell you that correctly run WCW is going to lose a hell of a lot less money than the XFL and it would be profitable a lot quicker than the XFL. However, this XFL is the public, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, Brian, what am I trying to say? Mainstream. It's Not mainstream. No, 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 no. It, 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 this is the defining moment to everyone but us wrestling fans of the life of Vince McMahon is this XFL. And unfortunately, because of how it's gone down, uh, he may be regarded as a laughing stock, as this pro professional wrestling promoter who is a laughing stock, uh, or, or something close to that, or certainly a unsavory individual maybe I don't know if that's the right word but but maybe I'm, I'm using the wrong words but he will not be regarded highly outside of his little world um, if the, if this thing fails because it's become such a thing and it's a personal thing to him you could tell by his reactions to and and being so his reactions to this he does not want this to fail and he's not he may not give up very he's not going to give up easily what is yeah he but you know what I think Vince really has to sit down and think okay look this thing I mean, we don't have the final rating for Saturday yet, but the overnight but it looks like it, two. Okay, so, but the, uh, the the fast national, which is pretty reflective of the national, is a one eight. So that's probably where it's going to tune up. Okay, or, so probably know, a one eight. And which I breaks mean, the all time the record. Thing is I not, I mean, the thing will absolutely not survive. And if it does, all it's going to do is he's just going to bleed money um, every year that he keeps the thing alive. And he, I think he's going to have to come to the conclusion that eventually. Probably sooner than later, he's going to have to close this thing down, and he might as well do it now and make some money um, doing what or he lose, does best. Lose, lose less right. money. Yeah, I mean, lose it's going to happen. I mean, it's not like it's not like he's at the the point right now where maybe this thing could be successful, but maybe it won't. I mean, he's at the point now where I don't think that it can be salvaged. Okay, I can a tell 1 you. A one-eight. Okay, I can tell you one thing though. There may be a way for him to make his money back if, if this thing steadies um, as a way as by selling franchises. If he could sell the franchises, he may be able to make back a lot of that debt um, because sports franchises usually go for pretty high prices. Again, the, the economics, and then you've got to and you've got to build a little bit of prestige because in a, in a league with no prestige, why would you want to spend money? To be in a league with no prestige, that's losing money. Okay, now people will lose money. On the NFL, knowing that when they resell, uh, they make their money back. If you know what I mean, in the, in the you, know, you know, it's a good investment. So it's he's got to build the prestige of the league up um, before he could offer it for sale and make and, and have and have like real life, you know, yeah, major think offers. Of, think of how much money will be bled from this XFL with him waiting for it to get any prestige whatsoever. Mm. It's not like something's going to happen by the end of the season. No, that's going to take a couple of years. Yeah, and, and, and a couple, a couple years of years, maybe down to nothing. Sixty million or whatever he's going to end up losing a year if this thing uh, continues at this rate. Well, and the other thing too is, is I, I will say one thing is guaranteed: it will not be on primetime in NBC next year. Mm -hmm. I mean that that much is you know it may be on Saturday afternoon on NBC. It may be where it will flop, or it may be on um, uh, CNBC on Saturday night where it will really flop. Um, but you know, so so I mean, there's. That big thing they got, which is that primetime network, I mean, the, the, the value of that, that's going to be out the window. And it will not be on primetime in UPN next season either because those numbers are actually worse than NBC's. Yeah. I mean, I just think that Vince needs to look at it as like, okay, I'm losing way too much money from this, and if I don't do something to salvage this second wrestling company, and it's just, you know, my one WWF monopoly, my wrestling business is going to start hurting as well. And then, you know, then what? He's going to have lost his XFL, his uh, leg, his mainstream legacy. He's going to be losing or at least um, hurting his wrestling business, and he's going to be up a creek. Well, you know, he's, right now, right now, he's a long way from being up a creek That's because true. the wrestling's doing so well. But you know what? And so he, he may not go. Be, so is WCW. You're absolutely right. Okay, but they are not going to make the same mistakes WCW made. However, you they never know make about new the mistakes if they're the only game in town. 
and they could make new mistakes if they're not thinking right. And the other one also is that um, you never can count on the public. This is a very cyclical public. I mean, they may tire of Vince McMahon's version of wrestling. Yeah. You know what I mean? One of the scary things about wrestling switching from simulated sports and not, you know, you know, I've been thinking back about all this. You know, you know, you know who is to say? You know, what's funny is, is like with, with Bischoff, okay? You know, Bischoff was one of the people who did help kill the company. Who is to say in 1993, I remember how bad it was, that they wouldn't have shut this thing down by 1995 if Bischoff hadn't have come up with Nitro and hadn't have turned this thing around. Maybe Bischoff gave it four more years than it ever would have got. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, I mean, they, you know, every other owner was certainly going nowhere with it. Maybe if it was owners where they were losing two, three, five, six million, ten million a year, running low budget wrestling, you know, who knows? I mean, if Turner hadn't done the AOL merger and Turner still had pow had power himself, the thing wouldn't have been shut down probably. Pa eh, well, the losses this year were so big that maybe it would have. But yeah, there's so many what it, there's so many different things. And again, with with McMahon for the future, um, you you just don't you just don't know that like like a television show, you know, it has a certain show, a, a, a sport like say the NBA. The NBA may be on television for a long, long time and theoretically may exist forever. It's been around for like 50 years. Okay, The NFL's been around for 75 years. Baseball's been around for over 100 years. Boxing's been around forever. Sports last a long time. Television shows don't. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, that's the difference. And when you become a variety television show, you know, you get five, seven years out of a variety television show. That's that's considered, you know, great. Ten years is considered, you know, very, you know, very few shows in history go ten years. And when you become a tell, you know, you know, Monday Night Football, great, of course, has been, a, been an institution, but that's a sport again. But you know, you become this variety television show with characters. You know, sooner or later, people get tired of the characters. The characters grow up or whatever, and you know. Yeah, what I mean? you know what? Under the way to look at it is, if you look at like um, soap operas, those things well, can be around much longer. Some, la some last they for some. They new characters in and get rid of old characters. And it's Some, not like you've got like a core of people, like for, for instance, MASH. What, are you going to kill all the people, the main characters in MASH, and bring in new characters and keep the show going? Well, the thing with soaps, some soaps do last a long time, but some soaps don't. Yeah. So, anyway, let me get to this really quick. Uh, poll question. Uh, how would you rate the decision to cancel wrestling on the Turner Networks? A, the biggest story in the history of wrestling. B, the biggest story in the last 30 years. C, one of the biggest stories. D, a big story, but not among the biggest. Poll for the weekend. What best describes your thoughts of where wrestling will be in one year? WF is going to be the only game in town. 35%, which is actually, well, we have two, two that kind of, anyway, we'll, we'll talk about this. B, someone will buy WCW and make a go of it. 17%. See, someone will open up a new company, a new major company, and make it work, 13%. UFC or mixed martial arts will become a real player, 6%. That is very low, especially since UFC may be number two uh, in like eight days <laughs> at this rate. Um, it's a very weak number two, I will say that. It's terribly weak right now. Uh, and then D, many will try, but ultimately they will all fail, 29%. There will be people. There is no question. There will be plenty that, of startup attempts. That, will that there will be a lot of startups in the next couple of years, but again, you're going to need na strong national cable um, behind it, uh, and a lot of money, and a lot of money to survive the beginning. I mean, again, you know, I talked about the, the roller derby thing before, and it just keeps hitting me. You know, what happened there when this exact same thing happened? And it was like, you know, roller derby was a very, very popular thing that had been around for years and years and years. It had ups and downs and everything. And, you know, when that thing went down, I mean, I've seen every single year practically for the first seven, eight years, somebody tried to start it up, and they always failed. And then after that, they maybe there were startups tried every three or four years, five years, and they all failed. And, you know, and then we even had this last one. And, you know, but ultimately, nobody has succeeded at it since the thing went down. It's been 27 years. And, and nobody probably ever will. Yeah. Tons of emails. Let me just go through a couple of these from Chris Najek, who says there was something really annoying about those comments from Jim Weiss about WCW not being part of their upscale brand. It came off as really snobbish. Hell, <laughs> it was. And I took it as a slap in the face to wrestling fans. <laughs> Definitely was that. And to the industry itself. And it was that too. I like. Uh, if you ask him if the ratings went up, would it be upscale enough for them? I'm not surprised he didn't give an answer because um, they don't know the answer. You know, it was. Here's the deal. It was a decision by Jamie Kellner. He just did something with Buffy, and I'm not exactly sure. That was his highest-rated show. 
he has not liked wrestling. I know people who've known him for over 20 years. He has never liked wrestling. The, if the ratings were good, he would have had a harder time getting rid of it. If the company was super pro, now first of all, if the company was turning a profit, I think they would have kept it. But if the ratings were good and the company was losing money, I think that he would have gotten rid of it. I think. Especially if the story about Buffy is uh, true. Yeah. Well, Buffy's definitely off of WB. I think it's moving to Fox. In fact, I'm pretty sure of that one. Hmm. Uh, it was, but I, I didn't read the exact story. But this story was actually out in I think today's trade journals also, because that was his second. His first move was wrestling. His second move was Buffy. Um, let's see. Um, can guys work independence after March 26th? I think anyone who wants to work independence can. Or do they have to wait until their 90-day cycles are up? No, I mean, they're not going to. What are they going to do, suspend them? Yeah, exactly. You know, I'm sure low-level guys that were already doing independence won't be affected, but what if a money mark wants to bring in Jeff Jarrett and Lance Storm to headline an indie show? Could he? Yeah, I'm sure he could. Uh, let's see. I heard you on the radio today in Boston. You said you might expect some wrestlers to appear at WrestleMania. That's just hypothetical. Um, other than Shawn Michaels. I mean, I would expect Shawn Michaels at WrestleMania, no, you know, no matter what, but... Uh, which wrestlers would you expect and would they waive the 90 agreement? All of that matters, again, on if WWF buys WCW, then they can bring in whoever they want. And if they're in negotiations to close a deal, WCW is not going to, and they go, hey, can we use this guy or this guy, even though we haven't closed the deal for WrestleMania since the deal is about to be closed, I think that, I don't think anyone's going to say, no, you can't. So it's really, that's all up to WWF. Uh, or up to, uh, yeah, up to WWF, what they want to do. Uh, that's from Steve, who says, uh, or Derek Cole, who says, it's a sad day for pro wrestling with the WCW thing and ECW gone. Who could you blame in WCW? The list is very long. You can say the match with Kevin Nash and Hulk Hogan. Listen, there's there's so many. You can't name, you know, Bill Goldberg losing to Kevin Nash. I mean, any one of those things on their own would not have killed it. It was so many things, it's just just for years straight. If I were to um, name, like, one thing that would be, like, a death blow, if you could name one, it would be... Uh... Turner selling Time Warner. Yeah, and and Jamie Kellner being uh, brought in as president. Yeah, that, that those are the two. Those are the two main things. Uh, let's see. This is from Ron, who says if all if WCW closing down is on the level, well, it's on the level in some form. I mean, what's on the level is that is that the Turner networks have canceled wrestling. That's on the level. As far as if Eric Bischoff can uh, get money together, which he probably which he probably can if he had time. And get a television network to bite, which is a question mark right now because no one's jumping at it. But if he can get that, and they are willing to sell to him and not Vince McMahon, then the company can be salvaged. It is a possibility. I don't know what happened today. A lot of what happened today may have, you know, you know, maybe we'll find out tonight. Who knows? Yeah, but you know what though? If Time Warner has canceled the shows, why would it really matter to them who buys the company? I mean, the whole thing before was, well... No, 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 you know, wait, Matt, no, they're just trying to get the most money for it, but here's the other thing. You're Vince McMahon. This is your chance to win. I mean, win for good, because no one's going to start up and challenge you, okay? This is your, plus, get any piece of talent that you want. You've got them under contract for however long they're under contract. All you got to do is outbid Eric Bischoff, and Vince is going to have more money than Eric can raise from investors. That's true. So, and I'm not saying that he's willing to spend $100 million to do it this week, but, you know, the idea that he wouldn't outbid him, and they're just looking, and, you know, Time Warner, they're just looking for the best money deal. Yeah. And once they've canceled the programming, they're not looking for, you know, the, the $100 Go million the dollars they job. were looking for. Yeah, or who, they, they, they don't care what's best for wrestling and best for wrestling competition. So, uh, anyway, uh, let's see, uh, let's see, there's, on the last Nitro, the last scene we should see is Ric Flair standing alone in the ring holding up the belt, having won his 15th world title. Nope. You know, I was thinking Rick about Flair. that this weekend, though. What? Ric Flair beating Scott Steiner in uh, Panama City next Monday? I was thinking, well, they could do the angle where uh, Flair's the guy who was jumping all the uh, Magnificent Seven. They sign the match, and during the match, everyone makes their big comeback. Goldberg kicks Steiner, Flair pins him, and the show and the uh, company is over. That that actually is the way to do it. You know, I was thinking that same thing, is that uh, for the final show, I would bring if it was up to me, I'd bring back Goldberg, Sting, and all of them, and have... You know, some big thing at the end and, you know, a big goodbye. Put Flair over. Yeah. If anybody deserves to be champion, I don't care if he's 100 years old, on the last WCW show, it's Ric Flair. Yeah, you know what? When the company folds, you're right. You're right. That would be the right way for it to end. Uh, this says that they have just cut Mark Chindrick. Uh, let's see. Uh, da, 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 um... I'm mailing you to settle an army. For, for three or four months in the spring and summer of 98, would you say Bill Goldberg was the biggest Steve Austin? Yes. 
Um, he's drawn bigger ratings than Steve Austin at, for, for a while there. And mainstream-wise, much bigger for, for yeah, yeah, definitely. Do you know what the attendance was for the w, WF show at the Air Canada Center? Uh, I think it was about 15,300. And the gate, I'm thinking, was like 686,000 Canadian. Is that, is that number right? I'll tell you. I can tell you, actually. Hold on. Uh, the gate was 686,000 Canadian, yes. Uh, so that's, that was the way they did about 440,000 U.S. Uh, no way. Some, what? I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just thinking back to every time I get a $20 payoff and it barely pays for Denny's on the way home. Oh, you mean Canada? Oh, yeah. Yeah. $20 payoff in Canada? That's like 13 bucks. <laughs> I do this for the love of the sport. I know you do. I know. Uh, this is Chris in Minnesota. Why did AOL Time Warner decide to dump WCW TV deal prior to selling it? Because if they dumped it like the day after selling it, they would be sued. <laughs> you have to have that. I mean, the whole deal is is that in the original contract, it guaranteed that they would provide television. And when they pulled that from the contract, that we will provide your television, you know, obviously the people going like, hey, you pulled that thing. And that's and then that's the whole thing. I mean, it was announced after the sale fell through, but it was when those guys were told. And let me tell you something. There was no guarantee, had that not been announced, that the Fusion deal still would have gone through because there, there were a lot of, there were a lot of roadblocks in the way, but it, I think it would have, I don't even say I think it would have gone through. There were a lot of roadblocks that were going on in that deal as well, but when they pulled that, uh, you know, the television, that they were not going to keep Nitro and Thunder, um, at that point, you know, what, you know, why would Fusion want to spend $50 million to buy this thing when you're not even guaranteed television? Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, they had to know that it would devalue the company. Would they sell it and cancel the shows right away anyway? Well, see, they couldn't do that. That's, that's the whole point. Could they not decide to cancel it months ago? They may, they, I think, I think, because Kellner just got put on board. Was I think it was like ago, two weeks ago, wasn't it? Two weeks ago. Um, Timing could, is everything. It, yeah. Do you think that Eric Bischoff has, a, don't you think Eric Bischoff has a lot of gall to try and buy WCW after putting the promotion in the shape that AOL felt it had to be sold? Not gall. No, not at all. Uh, it goes, if it's too late, they should still fire Buff and Lex right now. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what do you think the chances are of Steiner dropping the belt? I want McMahon to start? hire him and then fire him immediately. Just <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you think the WCW company line will be concerning the demise of the promotion? They've made a statement on their website, but what will their TV presentation be? I think they owe the fans the truth, but what will WCW give us? I don't know. Phone I'm very call curious. Eric Bischoff tonight. Yeah. How's this for the final segment of, of Nitro? All the wrestlers get together in the ring and WCW management gets in the ring and they all apologize to the fans. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the opposite of the ECW final scene. Uh, let's see. Uh, with WCW losing TV next week, will they still have house shows and have their website up? Um, the website will be up if the company exists. There will be no house shows for a long time. Please humor me and put the rest to the rumor about Hogan being at WrestleMania and help to promote his future league. Well, if he's going to be on WrestleMania, he's not promoting his future league. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to uh, beat as Hunter he... clean, and then he's going to announce that he's leaving to start a promotion on Fox. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Uh, questions. The deal with Fusion dead. I will find out tonight. <laughs> okay? I don't, I, you know, as of, it was close to dead. Uh, what would you do to change WCW? It's too late. I don't want to think about it. I've got to think about writing a story on the, the end of WCW. Uh, do you think Shane's looking bigger has to do with his friendship with the big show? Got no idea. How do you think Vince came off on On the Record? Uh, horrible. Uh, what, was Randy Savage supposed to go for Hulk Hogan before WrestleMania 6? And lose the title to a warrior. No. Uh, let's see. There are reports going around the net that Eric Bischoff will be on Nitro tonight live by phone. Why would he do it if the deal didn't go through? I don't know. We'll find out tonight. Uh, last night on the law, you sounded very depressed and down. Because <laughs> I was. <laughs> we all are. How is the ending of ECW and WCW affecting you personally and your business side? Right now, it hasn't affected my business whatsoever. How it will, I, I, I don't even want to predict. I don't think it's going to be good, that's for sure. As far as personally, I more was more depressed last night um, for the guys. You know, I, I know a lot of those guys there, and some of them are very good friends of mine. And uh, you know, they're all going to be out of work, or mm -hmm. most of them. And and I was very depressed about that. Uh, let's see. The Flair Dusty match returned me to my childhood. It was great. Nobody got hurt. The violence was fake and fun, and the good guy won, and everybody was happy. Uh, they should have turned the lights off after that match. Yeah, the last match was good too, though. Um, I just thought of this. Christopher Daniels and Michael Modest are screwed again. Yeah, I thought about that one with Modest uh, a while ago. Um, let's see. Uh, according to TNT's website, movies are going to be shown starting Monday, April 2nd. Okay. 
Uh, when is Bischoff scheduled to meet with Fox? He may have already met with them today. If WCW, okay, let me see what else. Let's start. We'll start going to phone calls. Let's go to Mark in Connecticut. You're first up. Gentlemen, how are we doing this afternoon? Hey. Eh, you know, I could be doing a lot better, actually. That's true. Hey, um, as I was finishing up Friday night talking to you guys, I, there was one major point that I forgot to bring up, and, uh, I think it affects somewhat the mentality of the possibility of another network picking up the show. It's the fact that, uh, well, we are looking at a writer's strike in, uh, in June, and, uh, very good point. Normally, I would say that uh, it would you know, the startup cost now with wrestling would be so much more than they would have been ten years ago because ten years ago it was one of the cheapest forms of programming going. Um, but I think TBS and TNT are being a little short sighted because let's face it, you know the mother of all Major League Baseball stoppages is coming October thirty first when that uh, labor agreement expires. And that's the other thing that nobody, I, I, you know, you know that's that is something. The, the Braves. I am so surprised because they, they have so much programming tied up in the Braves. The Braves provide quite a lot of programming. I mean, you know, it's, for, it's just so funny that WCW was a loss leader for so long that, I mean, I guess that once the ratings fell below a two and the losses, how do you lose $60 million? I mean, I was just trying to say... Bad, bad, bad management. The other thing is, too, is... But they... You know, this is, the, a, lot of, a lot of this was Russo and Creative. You know, how much money did they spend on but, props? Dave and Brian, that, that, here's my point, okay? Uh, let's say the guaranteed contract for all the guys' salaries, let's say, at most totaled 12 to $15 million, okay? No, 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 no. Salaries probably totaled about 40 For That much? Oh, my. Yeah. Even with the kiss? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Well, I guess that shoots my theory to pieces because I was going to say, <laughs> how much could your live events, I mean, $200,000 per live telecast, and you are getting at least 1000 paid. So maybe if you're only losing 50000 a live telecast times 52, that only would have been 4 or $5 million. I mean, it was just until I didn't think the contracts were so much a, uh, pr you know, disproportion of that loss. Yeah, but they were spending three quarters of a million dollars on, uh, you know, a week on, on production, too. You know, one of the stupidest things that means absolutely nothing in the grand scheme of things, but I saw it last night and I thought, well, it's one of the reasons why this company loses so much money. I'm watching Jeff Jarrett come down to the ring and he lifts his guitar in the air and Pyro comes out of his guitar. <laughs> and I thought to myself, okay, why the hell do you need Pyro coming out of your guitar? And it was like, even though that had absolutely nothing to do with anything, it's like I thought of that, and then I thought of the limo being tipped over by a forklift, and I thought back to cars blowing up, and I thought this is why this company, you know, this is why this company's losing sixty. Little mini movies filmed on beaches. <laughs> Stupid. Thing. Well, that was something different. That was another era. Oh my gosh, I know, but <laughs> that, but that was one of the bad ones. That's for sure. That's true. Um, you know, my my point being is, um, I, I guess I owe you know Mr. McMahon an apology. A couple weeks ago, I alluded to the fact that he is very much ego driven, but uh. I guess Jimmy Kellner really does carry a big stick, doesn't he? I mean, talk about egos coming in and just cutting a path his first week in the uh, in the division. Yeah, yeah, you're telling his first his first two decisions. I mean, exactly. Uh, my, my apologies to McMahon. I, Jimmy carries a far bigger stick than Vince has ever had at this point in his time. That should also tell you that they're not thinking these things out. I mean, this guy's been in for two weeks, and th That's true. these decisions have already been made. Um, I think th w one of the other points I wanted to make... Um, you talk about privatizing the um, the XFL with the ownership deal. Vince maybe recouping his losses by privatizing, but in essence, that would defeat what he was setting out to do. It wouldn't be his league anymore, and that was the whole purpose to start this. Because well, that's that's true. The owner, the NFL ownership, would not ratify him as an owner or part owner of Vikings. So I'm still. Well, they sure won't now. <laughs> exactly. I'm sure this whole thing was to stick it in Vince's eye. I mean, stick it in the NFL's eye, and maybe the Canadian League more than than than, than them actually, because the Canadian League, if he wanted to buy the CFL, and they true. they told him no. And, I, I mean, you know, deep down, I think Vince knew he couldn't beat the NFL, but I think he probably did think he would beat the CFL. And do you realize there's still rumors that he's going to be part of an ownership group, group to buy the Red Sox? There's no, he's turning. I, I think there's never been anything to that one. Right. I think that was just... Well, I, think could, so? I could see him being... I mean, that would just give him... Well, part the, of a, as far as part of an ownership group, yeah. Yeah, that's As far the whole as main thing. owner, and that I would think, be... I, I would be very surprised if the, if the if the ownership would vote him in, but he does have Steinbrenner on his side, and whatever. However, Steinbrenner votes, so do the other twenty eight. So, yeah, he, he might have had him in. But uh, I'll let you guys go. I just wanted to bring up that point about the uh, the uh, d director and writers guild stoppages and the major league stoppages, the uh, the uh, the work agreement at the end. So maybe you want to talk it from from it from that uh, hook. So uh, I'll let you guys go, and I'll talk later. Talk to you guys later. Bye bye. Yeah, that is a really valid point. In that the Screen Actors Guild, if they go on strike. There'd be no the, the, there'd be no writing of new television shows, and wrestling does not fall under those uh, under those pro, whatever under that umbrella. So it it could provide first run programming for a network during a period where a lot of networks are going to have a lot of trouble doing first run programming. And it can be very valuable because again wrestling can be 
it, it can't be done cheap is like like it was in the past, but it can still be it can be cheaper. I mean, put it this way: um, an episode of wrestling probably costs a whole lot less to put together than say an episode of um, what was that show on that's on after that used to be on after wrestling, Bull. Um, Bull. That wasn't drawing half the rating, but then again, you know, Bull was probably drawing better demo. I mean, demos. I mean, not demos, but um, better More advertising rates. Demos. Well, yeah, more, more valuable, whatever it's called. Uh, Mike and the Mad Dog, a radio show on uh, WFA in New York, said that they are going to have Vince McMahon on the show Thursday at 3 p.m. Okay, that's fine. You know what else they said? They said that Bob Costas was unprepared and that they will do a better job, but that they would stick to talking about football. So oh. I would, like to, okay. I would like to hear them do a better job. I mean, I'm not saying that they won't. I, I would just like to hear them do a better job. Well, I will, uh, I will take that interview. What time is it again? Uh, 3 p.m. It's 3 p.m. 3 p.m. on Thursday. Thursday. All right. Well, I'll be doing Eddie's show, but I'll make sure I have a uh, radio going with the tape. Okay. And Brian, real quick. Yeah. Um, have, you, have you seen the tape of the show yet? No, not yet. Okay. Okay. I have. So if anyone wants to bring that up, um, I, you know, there's really, the, the perception I got watching on tape was the same perception I got when we listened to the two segments. I thought Vince was, was pretty good on the XFL, and I thought that he just came off horrible on the wrestling. In fact, Horrible the point. I was embarrassed to be, I was I, I, I was embarrassed to be a wrestling fan. That this is the man who was the leader of this profession. You know what I mean? Because it's like it's yeah. it's hard and en- it's hard enough. I mean, I, I always say it's hard enough. I've been through enough in life defending being a wrestling fan. Okay. He didn't against need this. Unju- against unjust criticism. Okay. And it's really bad when the number one guy gives you gives everyone watching it. Tons of just criticism, and you just go, "You're right." What can I say? And and I uh, I will say that there's a couple of points we talked about them before, and I wrote a lot about them in this week's Observer. That that they're very minor points that I do think that Costas um, was was um, I say unprepared on. Um, that one one you know that I wouldn't have brought up the the tape thing. I think that he should not have brought that up. Um, but overall, I thought Bob Costas. Given the situation, I think he did an excellent job, not even a good job. And I think that the criticism of Bob Costas is, I think that it's it's two things. It's number one, um, I think I just think it's totally unjust. I'll just leave it at that. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, other than if you how did Vince come off physically? I never thought for a second Vince was going to hit him, which a lot of people thought watching it. I mean, Vince was trying to intimidate him physically. Costas didn't like the Mr. McMahon intimidation. Yeah, like definitely. And then one time, trying to intimidate another real life human being. Yeah, and then another time he tried to do this Chief J. Strongo, which you probably wouldn't even know what that is, Brian, but but he would because he grew up with him. Um, but uh, like this Chief J. Strongbow thing of trying to verbally, like you know, the way he was moving his head and everything, I'm going like, oh my God, this is J. Strongbow from the 70s. So he was doing stuff like that, um, you know, like just basically going into into a, a cartoon of a person, and you know, Costas. Costas did a hell of a job, and he was, you know, Costas was calm through the whole thing, and, um, you know, I, I think he did a hell of a job not losing his cool um, under the circumstances. If I was, I, you know, if someone wrote in and goes, you know, it's too bad, you know, you didn't do the interview instead of Bob Costas because whatever, and it's like, believe me, if I could have done that interview and not lost my cool um, and stayed on track, I would be a better person than I am because I couldn't, I could not have done it. I'd have lost, I'd end up in a you know, if he started arguing, I'd just start arguing back, and everyone would forget about every issue and be two children arguing, and it's, what good would that be? Uh, let's see, it's from Bob Calhoun. It'd How be much fun TV. Fi- yeah, it actually would be fun for people to watch. It'd be very entertaining, but, but you know, then what would happen is everybody would go, oh, I like Dave, so he was right, and I like Vince because he was right. Nobody would care about, like, what anybody, what, what points anyone actually made, so what yeah. this, you know, I mean, I've... You can't let, you can't let the stuff get personal because the minute you let it get personal, you ruin, you know, you, you just lose... The issues stop mattering, and you know, then what good? Then what good is it? Anyway, this is from Bob Calhoun. How much does the failure of the XFL stigmatize pro wrestling? It's a very interesting question, and I, I don't know. Did the bad perceptions of pro wrestling of the pro wrestling products stemming from the negative XFL press impact WCW in regards to how ne- network executives at AOL Tell Warner perceive the future of pro wrestling related programming? Is pro wrestling now considered uncool because the XFL is considered so uncool and it's connected to pro wrestling? I think people separated. I hope so. Um, let me see. Uh, do you think Ed Farrar or any of the other WCW writers will get picked up? Or oh, maybe Vince Russo. <laughs> yeah, right. Terry Taylor, maybe. Uh, I think Bill Banks, no. I think uh, Ed Farrar, no. But I don't know for sure. Um, let's see. 
do you think the WCW will try to put on the very best possible show tonight? Uh, I think they should because we've gotten very low quality shows in the past year, and I think they owe it to the fans. Also, do you think that anyone out of the ordinary will show up? I hope so. Last, I have a feeling this will be a show to remember, whether that's negative or positive. Next week is the final show, not, not tonight. So I think that next week will probably be the show to remember, hopefully. Do you think the Dead McMahon will let the WF fold if NBC pulls out? Not the WF, you mean XFL, maybe. Um, let's see. Um, isn't it weird? It's like 1988 all over again. In two weeks, the top two companies will be the WWF and the NWA. Uh, you are giving the NWA far too much credit. They don't even have television. I, I mean, I, you know, I mean, they may have affiliates, you know, like uh, in Puerto Rico and, um, you know, uh, all these different places that consider them, you know, like promoters that have paid their $500. They don't even have television yet. Um, do you think that WF dropping Power Pro might work out for Randy Hales? Possibly in the long run, now that WCW's out of business, there'll be a lot of great workers working the independent scene that he could use and rebuild the territory. No, because he doesn't have enough money to do it, and because the one problem with Memphis is that although people will watch wrestling for free, people will not pay to see wrestling unless it's WWF. I mean, Randy, Randy can, Hales can't really draw. Um, and that's, you know, you know, I mean, running a spot, I mean, when they do spot shows, they draw like 100 people. So... If they brought in stars, probably they would lose money on bringing in the stars. Well, I could be wrong. Maybe they'll, 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 maybe they'll give it a try. Uh, let's see. When WCW goes out of business, I uh, won't have a devastating effect on magazines such as PWI. Oh, it's gonna, it's gonna affect everyone. Don't, don't uh, give yourself. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. It's so sad because a federation with so much history can be destroyed because of a dumbass like Vince Russo. It, again, it was not just Vince Russo, and he may not be. Um, you know, whatever. It may, he may not even be the number one reason, although he is one of the biggest reasons. There's no question of that either. Jamie Kellner says wrestling's not upscale enough. I wonder if they'll continue to guys who like movies and movie lounge. Those are really upscale things. Hey, look, we can argue that one all the time, but it doesn't, doesn't matter, matter because he's made his decision, and, and he didn't like wrestling 20 years ago, and he was the guy put in charge. Uh, let's see. Here we go. Here we go. Um, claiming WB Network chief Jamie Kellner had insulted his show... Creator Josh Whedon says he's ready to move Buffy the Vampire Slayer to a different network. It makes me angry to see the show belittled, Whedon told the Daily News. For Jamie Keller to call it a team show and dismiss his own product angers me. It doesn't breed love. Tension erupted earlier this year when Whedon and Buffy producers at 20th Century Fox asked WB to pay $2 million per episode, doubling the current cost. WB exec said they would go up to $1.6 million, but no higher, claiming that's all they could pay without losing money on the show. The resulting impasse said producers hunting out for other homes for Buffy and star Sarah M Michelle Geller, including Fox, a corporate sibling of 20th century. So um, that's, I guess, what the deal is. Um, it's uh, let's it's da -da 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 -da. basically a, on, on a part of that, Dave. Basically, Sarah Michelle Geller is saying she won't go to any network but the WB to do the show. So she's basically saying either it stays on the WB or she's leaving. So she okay. leaves. The show is gone. Wow. But Kellner says it's not our number one show. It's not a show like ER that stands above the pack. Uh, let's see. During its five years, Buffy's earned a loyal fan base appealing mainly to viewers in their 20s. Whedon said it also and spawns... 30s. I'm a big fan of the show, too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, WB spokesman Brad Terrell defended Kellner's comments, saying they weren't meant as insults. We have tremendous respect for Josh Whedon, Sarah Michelle Geller, and everyone associated with the show. They've delivered a consistently excellent program for five years. So, that's the, the, problem, the problem, though, with the WB, though, is, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I believe they own the rights to Angel, which follows directly after Buffy's show, and it's... Uh, the character that was introduced on Buffy the Vampire Slayer. So if they lose Buffy, they're losing their lead-in to their to their nine o'clock show. Because both, I, I, if I'm not mistaken, I believe the WB owns Angel, but they don't own Buffy. Fox owns owns Buffy. So it's it's you know, to me it sounds like it's in the WB's best interest to keep it if they can. Mm. Because then you've got then you've got Buffy, and then you have their other Fox's other big show on Tuesday night at nine o'clock is Dark Angel. With uh, Jessica Alba, so if you have the two of them on Fox, it's going to crush whatever WB is, uh, you know, playing on a Tuesday night if they lose Buffy. Okay, this is stuff that I don't know because I never get to watch television on Tuesday nights <laughs> <laughs> or television at all, unfortunately. While Vince has a tremendous ego and hates to fail, I think he's proven he's more of a businessman and bottom line guy. He's all about money and power. Losing millions doesn't set well with him. Well, we will find out about that one uh, if they renew the XFL or if they change it up. Well, if, I tell you what, if they do redo it next year, it will be totally changed. I mean, I, I'm sure of that. Uh, how is this WCW closing story any larger than Vince Man's steroid hall? I think it's much larger, don't you? Well, something's actually happening here. I mean, yeah. if Vince had been uh, sent to prison, 
and uh, someone else had to take over or something like that, it'd still be it would be have been bigger. But it's not like the WWF died and it left just one organization. Yeah. I mean, there's one company left in the U.S. that's going to be, uh, you know, running everything. Yeah, most likely. Barring something unforeseen, uh, which I guess we'll find out about tonight. Uh, what are the odds of Fox giving WCW a slot on one of their channels? Um, it may, well, again, that will be something that we will know tomorrow, probably. I mean, um, this is someone who goes, I am probably the only person who feels this way, but it has to be said... The guy who every wrestling fan calls a genius is a fool. That's right, Vincent Mann is a fool. Okay, let's see where this goes. While adolescent boys and starry-eyed middle-aged perverts brand him a god, I can remember with one quiet voice speaking to the entire industry about the dangers of doing trash television. That was Eric Bischoff. While his exact words escaped me, he alluded to the fact that wrestling was in trouble because advertising would steer clear of the product if the trend continued. Uh, he did say that. He said that if we present this trashy image, we're not going to get advertisers um, that a lot of the advertisers are going to pull out, and there are only so many advertisers who will even do wrestling to begin with. And one of the excuses for this thing being canceled, even though the ratings are still competitive, is that they can't get advertisers that will spend the money on wrestling as compared to other shows that do lower ratings. And there is truth. But that's always been the case. That's not just because Vince McMahon went this way in the last three or four years. Wrestling's always had that image, even you know in the 70s. Okay, rather than heed the warnings, Vince McMahon consumed with a passion to win the war, cut off his nose to spite his face, TBS and TNT proved that when they released a statement about not wanting wrestling on their station because it wasn't in line with their upscale programming, um, Vince McMahon has turned wrestling's image to mud. You know, I can't blame Vince for that one, because it, because that that stuff was going to happen whether Vince did it or not. Uh, okay. Um, did you say it's a done deal with Vince buying WCW or just a chance it could happen? It's... Most likely going to happen unless something has changed greatly in, in the last day. It is it has not happened yet. Uh, let me go back to some of the calls. Let's go to Terry in North Carolina. Terry, what's up? Hello, how you doing, Dave? I'm doing all right. Okay, it's been a long time. Okay, yes. Um, all right, the question I have. Um, okay, what's the status of Hulk Hogan going to the WWF? Are you still in the contract um, with WCW? His contract with WCW is over, and it's up to WWF. Um, if they want to take him, they can take him. Uh, he'll go. I'm sure, you know, I mean, I'm, and, and, you know, maybe, you know, it depends on what his terms are. I'm sure he's not going to go without, you know, he's not going to give up his ego and just job for everybody if that's what they want. But, <laughs> you know, if um, if they can work out a deal, yeah, he can go. Every, anyone can go now. For pretty much, WWE's going to, you know, I mean, well, again, I shouldn't say anything yet, but, you know, I mean, you know, Vince can get almost anyone he wants. Yeah, didn't you say something about that? If um, they buy WC, um, w, um the contract going to be separate from um, the business itself? What do you mean? As far as like, um, if they buy WCW, that doesn't include a contract in there, or will it include a contract? Um, that is something that still needs to be fully negotiated. Vince is not going to pay, and he doesn't have to, the contracts of these guys because it, ups it upsets his salary structure. So, so he will not do that. So they will have to work something out. I mean, it really how, makes no sense for Vince to uh, buy the contracts because he doesn't need to tie these guys up right now. No. Because what are they going to do? There's no yeah, way to go. Yeah, where are they going to go? Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to tell you what they may make and make out a star, Big Papa Pump. Uh, if he wants to, he can make anyone a star. But yeah, you're right. He could if he wanted to. I don't know that he would want to. He's got, okay, you got to remember about Scott Steiner. He's got a real bad back. We were just talking about it earlier in the show. And the WWE schedule is 200 days a year, not one show a week. And Scott Steiner is almost 39 years old. So, and he's got uh, plenty of money. And he's got plenty of money. So I mean, the whole thing is going to be, I mean, if this guy, I mean, it's not like Scott Steiner needs to wrestle right now. I mean, they're going to tell him, look, if you want to be on top, we're going to need you on these house shows. You have to do four days a week, you know, pay-per-views and TV. And if he can't do it, he won't. Physically, the thing is, is, physically, I don't know that he'll be able to last on that kind of a schedule. And in the WWF, the other thing is, you have to work. They don't want lazy guys out there. You know, I mean, they, and they and they don't have to have lazy guys. They can get anyone they want in this business. They only got however many spots, 40, 50, 60 spots, whatever it's going to be, probably closer to 40 on the active roster that are going on the road. They don't need to be spending big money for someone who's lazy because there's so many hungry guys out there that aren't lazy that they could put in that same spot. And, and, and you know, so, so you know, long-term Scott Steiner... Um, I, I think that they'll give him a chance if he wants to go, but uh, he may not do as well as people think because of that. Because Physi physically, he can't. It's nothing against him. Yeah. 
Okay, yeah. Why you say Russo? Uh, maybe I won't probably pick up Russo. I would. You never say never, but I would say never. That one's. You probably, probably never. Yeah. Yeah, because um, it felt like um, he did a lot of like Russo did a good job when he was there, even though McMahon did nick him. Um, Russo, Russo did a good job in the ratings, but I think the company was better in the long run without him. Um, I think that as far as, you know, what, what Russo did, he'd gone as far as he could go and it was going to burn out anyway. And it was good that they got back to, um, a better product, um, without him. I think that they gave him more legs for the long run, even though, you know, the ratings are not what they were, but it's a different business now than it was that, you know, two years ago as well. Okay, yeah, and I agree with y'all too. Getting rid of Buff Bagwell and Lex Luger, I did pretty much like that squash last night. Well, they we'll just see. thought about that a long time ago. It was their best match ever. <laughs> <laughs> no, it wasn't though, because they didn't, they didn't, they didn't do their purpose. You know, they didn't get those guys over again, even though they put them over. They put them over in a way to not get them over. Same thing. Oh, so a squash match doesn't necessarily put the wrestlers over. Well. It, it would it would have except the way I mean I think for television it probably put them over a little bit but in the building I know it didn't because those guys were just doing that clown act afterwards and by the time it was over nobody took anything seriously okay. you know with them just laying there pretending they were dead after a shanton bomb you know and people were just like oh god this is such BS and that was what they were trying to accomplish oh so Lex Luger and um, Buff Bagwell were doing this stuff on purpose oh yeah oh yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. They didn't want a job like that at all. I mean, Bob back, well, you might have to give up because of that neck injury. I just that neck up. injury, that neck injury, he was just spoofing that, so, you know. He ain't got enough moves in his arsenal either. Yeah. He's hard. We got to run, Terry, okay? Okay, thank you. All right, you're welcome. Um, let's see. It's from Christian Vancouver goes, I'm glad to see my favorite wrestler, Easy Money, get a chance to showcase himself. What a great job he did last night, huh? Mm-hmm. Him and Kiwi had the second best match on the show, in my opinion. Um, actually, in most people's opinion, I think. Um, they, they, you know, boy, what a what a great those first two matches on that show were were so good, and then afterwards it wasn't quite as good. And I, you know, GDP and Steiner was good. Chavo and Helms was good as well. I have a funny story about uh, young Jason Chad. Apparently, he had this uh, orange costume. Oh, I heard this. That he was going to wear to the ring that actually had wings on it, like jet wings. It extended like a foot out on each side, and it was supposed to be like the most ridiculous costume you ever saw and I can't remember who it was I think it was Rick Steiner just kept telling him dude that looks awesome just wear it out there come on dude that looks great and um, apparently someone uh, someone talked him out of it luckily but I guess it was just one of the most embarrassing things you had ever seen okay this is what it says um, this is the story on the Buffy thing they have a deal similar to USA's WF deal where they have the right of first refusal um, and then Fox was pushing for, was was offering three million dollars per episode, and WB only went up to 1.6. Um, their total advertising revenue on the show is not enough to make the price, which was probably a deliberate move on Fox's part. So I guess that's the deal. I guess basically they're losing Buffy the Vampire Slayer uh, because of um, their, you know, its contract is up, and they're not willing to, they can't, other other networks are outbidding them for the show. So that's what that's all about. Um, let's see. Any update on WrestleMania as it pertains to the Hardy Boys and Triple H? Uh, I think that the whole card should be pretty obvious by tonight. I'm, I was assuming the Hardys were in some sort of a tables, ladders, and chairs with Christian Edge and the Dudleys. That's what was talked about a week ago. Triple H will either be in a single match with Undertaker or they may make it a tag, uh, which would be Kane and Undertaker against Triple H and Big Show. Um, so anyway, that's what's going on there. You're laughing. <laughs> wow. Uh, let's see. I've heard a rumor about Tajiri, Rhino, and a couple other ECW guys going to the WWF. Uh, Tajiri, yes. Rhino, for sure. Rhino's already been working on some of the shows and dark matches and uh, at the arenas. Tajiri has not started working there yet. If WWF purchased the WCW, would they acquire its historical library of shows and pay-per-views in their vault? Yes. And what would they do with them? Nothing. Well, they don't do anything with their own, with their own, with exactly. their own library. Yeah. Um, let's see. WCW should bring back Scott Hall for one show on the final show. Uh, we'll be oh, back from God. He'll be back from Japan. They actually could do that. Uh, the fans want to see him. Well, it does, it does It does allow them to finalize that angle. Hey, that's true. And, it, you know, it's in Panama City. It's not that far, and it's a big party, so he, he probably won't be the only one drunk on the air. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? So, anyway, let's go to Brooks in Ontario. Brooks, what's going on? 
Hi, not much. How you doing, guys? Hey. I'm doing pretty good. I just had a couple questions. Uh, have you heard anything about WrestleMania's location next year? Uh, no, not for sure. Okay, and uh, I've been reading on the internet they're going to do Shane and Jericho against Vince and Regal at WrestleMania. I th think that may not be the case. I think it's going to be Jericho Regal single. That, they may change that tonight, though. We'll see. Yeah. Well, Shane um, has a big announcement tonight, so we'll know. They may. I mean, it may be. It may be. I just know that last week Jericho and Regal were under the impression they were wrestling each other in a single. But yeah. you know, things change on a daily basis too. Yeah. Anything else on uh, Bischoff on Nitro or Sean on Raw tonight? I haven't heard anyone say anything about Sean being on Raw tonight. I don't. You know, that doesn't mean it won't happen. But um, I actually asked about it yesterday, so I don't. I don't think he's going to be on. Um, Bischoff is going to be on a phone conversation. I have no idea what it's about. Um, so we'll, we'll wait and see. And uh, what do you think uh, WCW's Nitro rating is going to be next week, considering it's the last show? Depends on how they promote it. If they promote it as the last show, then the rating should be up a little bit. If they pretend, you know, it depends. You know, it depends on what's a lot depends on what's done today and how hard it's promoted in the last week and how much media play it gets. It doesn't get a lot of media play um, and a lot of promotion. I mean, just the fact that people on the internet know that won't make you know that'll give them maybe a tenth of a point or two tenths of a point difference. I mean, no, it'll. I, you know, I, again, we'll have to wait and see how it's pushed for the next week. It's going to be hard for it to be over about a 2.6, two, 2.7 two, anyway, though. You know, you just don't gain that much. Yeah, I, I can't think of getting a 3.0 or something like that. I don't think so, unless they... I, I mean, if it's in, the, in all the newspapers and stuff, this is the final episode, and you're going to see, like, Dusty Rhodes and Bill Goldberg and Hulk Hogan and all these guys on the show, yeah, you know, they might be able to do a 3.0. But if it's not out there and people know about it, more than just the Internet, um, you know, it's it'll be a, it may be up a little bit, but I don't think that it's... And it's going to make a huge difference, you know. It'll be, you know, it'll, it'll, it'll be up though. Some better uh, be. After you went off the wall last night, uh, were you listening to that uh, uh, Vander Linden guy about the new XCW? I think it's called the new indie promotion. Mm -hmm. No. Oh, he's uh, starting up in Ontario. Might get some TV for indies, which we haven't seen in a very long time. Mm hmm. So. Well, that's that's cool. Um, I guess I'll... Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks very much. Tons of emails, full bank of calls, so many emails. This is, like, unbelievable. If we don't get to yours, I really apologize. Anyway, this is a good one. Vince should hire Lex and make him wear yellow polka dots. <laughs> okay. Anything on the, new, on the news of Jerry Jarrett and the announcement that Joe Pettacino made? Yeah, Joe Pettacino on his radio show yesterday, they had Burt Prentice on, who's, oh, anyway, Burt Prentice was on and said that Jerry Jarrett would have an announcement. Jerry Jarrett uh, put together a proposal, um, you know, I think we mentioned earlier in the show, to buy WCW, he had a group of investors. They were he was in the hunt along with Bischoff, along with Vince McMahon, along with World Wrestling Federation, Vince McMahon. And you know they backed off obviously when the time slots were not included in the package. And they, you know there is talk they may do something. Burt Prentice said that Jarrett would have an announcement. I know someone very close to Jerry Jarrett uh, was saying yesterday that it's don't you know it's not as big a news story as it sounds. So. Uh, you know, it's more like something that's being thought about as far as I can guarantee that all of a sudden, you know, he's opening a big national promotion, he's got a big contract. I mean, they're exploring it. You know, I'm sure that there's like a lot of people out there today who are calling up, you know, every, you know, network, every ESPN and everything, exploring it because of the, com the um, what is it, the, uh, the talent that will be available, theoretically available, but, um, you know, again, it's like putting that deal together, and you know, on, and on a strong enough station, and you, you can't do it with syndication anymore. You've got to have the, you've got to have some sort of a network national thing. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Uh, da, 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 da. Do you think that Eric Bischoff or an outside writer like yourself or Brian will ever write a book on the backstage events of the Monday Night Wars, including the start of Nitro, the NWO, the rise of the WF to where it is today? Um, Sean Sale is actually. Those? Sean Asale is working on that book right now. I don't know how good it will be, but he's been working on it. Let's see, this is WWF Raw tonight. Uh, Hardy's against the Dudleys for the tag team title. Big Show defends the hardcore title against Raven. Taz against Stevie Richards. Dean Malenko and Terry against Molly and Crash Holly. Shane McMahon makes an announcement. It's from Elliot to Gozo. What are the chances of some of the mid-card guys like Canyon and Kidman getting in the WWF? Uh, Canyon, I think, has got a pretty decent chance. Kidman... I to, again, it depends. If they want to operate as a separate company, I think Kidman's got a real good chance. If they just want to bring in a couple of guys, I think Kidman's chances then would be a lot less. Where you see Kaz Hayashi, uh, again, if they're going to operate as a separate company, he may have a chance. If not, I presume that he'll probably wind up back in Japan or Mexico. That kind of uh, uh, kind of goes for 
anyone who is small. Yeah. I mean, as uh, far did you as, say Hogan uh, will be at WrestleMania? No, I did not say that. Uh, let's see. I was talking about about the end of WCW with a friend, and we disagreed on whether and Jeff Jarrett would find employment with the WWF. I assume the two are on good terms <laughs> concerning Jeff work, no mercy without a contract, albeit with a big payoff. Do you think Vince would hire him again? Uh, Just remember tough. that Vince McMahon always gets the last laugh. And Jeff Jarrett held him up for like $180,000 or whatever it was. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, it was like, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, almost $200,000, yeah. And uh, Vince McMahon is always going to remember that. And he will get his last laugh. I mean, if anybody's going to come in wearing uh, yellow polka dots, it's going to be Jeff Jarrett. Lex Luger. Lex Luger. It's Lex Luger. He walked out. He walked out on the show with no notice. Remember that? Showed up on Nitro. I just don't. Well, that's what I'm saying. I don't think they're going to take Luger back at all. But uh, they may take Jarrett, but they'll humiliate him. Oh, if they take Jarrett, though, boy, he's going to be paying a price. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, if the sale goes through, what happens to the contracts of the wrestlers? Again, it depends on the nature of the sale. We've said that um, before. Uh, how do you know for certain that WCW is going to sell to Vince McMahon and not get another TV deal? I don't know for certain. This is the most likely. We may know for certain in a day or two. Um, do you think Steiner will drop the belt? He should on the last show. They should have a babyface win the belt on the last show. But uh, I don't know. Uh, what, do, what do you think about Ric Flair pinning him with one finger? Nah, I think no. That'd be horrible. Yeah. Yeah. That. Yeah. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see. With WCW going into business, does that make WOW part of the big two? No, because they're out of business, too. WOW's dead, for too. For all intents and purposes, yeah. I mean, they're dead. Uh, let's see. Jamie is right. Wrestling's too low brow for TBS. We need to make more room for John Rocker. Hey, you know, you can do this all the time, but it doesn't change anything. It doesn't matter. Yeah. They, I mean, that's just, a, that's just a decision. Uh, let's see. Did you read Figure 4 this week? You know, I didn't get it yet. It goes, um... He goes, I almost died laughing. I usually almost die laughing when I read it, too. Um, Herb Prentice and Joe Pettacino swore up and down that Jerry Jones... You didn't get the newsletter yet this week? I didn't get it yet, no. What is going on? You know, I wrote this uh, this big rant about uh, the Postal Service and how uh, I was doing this new deal that hopefully would get them delivered faster. And uh, just got some letters from people in New York going, I'm getting them sometimes on, on Friday. I got mine today. Well, so much for that uh, theory. <laughs> I just shot the theory down. Sorry. <laughs> but, no, I was, uh, I was I was I was really mad on Saturday when I didn't get it. That's weird. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, Kid Cash will be working for Thunder tonight against Jason Jett. He will be called Cash. The match, if it lives up to the independent bouts the two have had, should be a great one. Yeah, it probably. Cash should. or K Cash. <laughs> um. Uh, let's see what we have here. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. I would also like to say I didn't think Bob Costas came off unprepared, but I didn't think Vince came off bad. Of course, there were a couple of uneasy parts, but I thought Vince made some good points. My question is, do you think this will affect the ratings in any way? Well, I guess we saw Saturday. Uh, the ratings of the XFL were down six-tenths. It appears to be six-tenths of a point. Uh, next year, Vince can start the season of the XFL by saying last year was just a dream. Uh, is it me or is it Kurt Angle's moonsault amazing? Uh, amazing. Yes. Yes, it absolutely is. Uh, let's go to uh, John in Florida. John, what's going on? Dave, how are you doing? I'm doing fine. Hey, listen, is it true that Eric is going to call live on Nitro tonight? Yes. And do you think he's going to make the announcement that Fox and um, Fusion got it? I can't imagine, but it's possible. Anything's possible. It's, take, it's hard for me to believe they could have put that thing together in one day. I mean, yeah, but didn't Rupert is. Murdoch always wanted a wrestling company? At different times, they have wanted one, yes. But at other times, they haven't. It just There's but so many people and so much complication. It's just, you, you know, it's like, is Ted Turner always wanted a wrestling company? Yes, but they don't got one anymore. Let me ask you this. What makes everybody so certain this is real? How do you know it's not one of Eric's genius plans? What makes uh, be, this so sure? Uh, okay, I got, a, I got a question. Why would Jamie Kellner, the head of programming at CBS, TNT, and WB, where wrestling is not even a major part of their programming, in his very first public act, do a work that's in the New York Times and, and places like that? But think he about will lose this. his credibility so much if this is a work... For wrestling, do you think he's going to do, lose his credibility for pro wrestling? That he Dave. Even like? That he hates? Come on. 
Think but, about this. Uh, it was, I mean, I know, last you, night, I, some you, of the wrestlers were, were doing the same thing and just going like, oh, you know Eric, you know Eric. And it's like, yeah, I know Eric. Eric Eric loves to do those kind of works, but he ain't getting Jamie Kellner to do his his wrestling angle. Sorry. There's no, there is no way. Now, he, he may have put a deal together with Fox today. He may not have. But Jamie Kellner did not cancel that programming as a work. How, how are, um, what are they going to say now here? Damn, I forgot. Oh, how are they going to announce that next week it's the last show? If it is the last show, are they going to oh, say we'll something find, tonight? We'll find out tonight. It's I don't know how they're going to handle it. I was shocked. Yeah, I, I don't know. They, they certainly, you know what I thought was really sad was watching that pay-per-view last night and them not even acknowledging that anything. Yeah. You know what I mean? I just thought that something should have been said at least it in some way. It was eerie to me. Now, let me ask you this. What yes. happens if Shivani says, well, next week will be the last show, then all of a sudden Eric calls in? Is it going to make you suspicious? And why are they doing all these angles now? Who's hitting these guys backstage, Medeja, Animal? Why are they doing storylines? It'll all lead to next week. Yeah, hopefully it'll all be explained in the last show. Oh. And what about okay. the rumors that Hogan's going to fight Triple H that Wade Keller said? Uh, not happening at this WrestleMania. All right, thanks, Dave. All right, bye-bye. Uh, this is from Sean, who goes, I get really sick of WCB blame all going on Russo. He took over the show from Kevin Sullivan and the good old boys. And the ratings went up. The, the show was, was driven into the ground during that time. We can still argue the belt on Arquette was hell, but that stuff was still better than Sullivan and when Nash, Sullivan and Nash had the book. It was all bad, okay? But Russo, the difference between Russo and Sullivan... Nash was real bad. Okay, with Sullivan, Sullivan was real bad too, but Russo destroyed the fabric of the company, which Nash and Sullivan did not do. It was salvageable after Nash. Um, very sal sal salvageable. I really believe that a good wrestling person would have turned it around after Nash. That was where Russo came in and hurt it real bad. Didn't kill it, hurt it real bad. Sullivan came in, and Sullivan... I will grant you did a very bad job. It was really boring television when Sullivan was running it. And then Russo came in and stuck the, the dagger right in the heart of the company at that point. Uh, let's see. Which WF wrestlers will now suffer with Vince being able to bring in any wrestler he wants? Small. The bottom guys. Are, yeah. Actually, everyone but the top guys in some form, especially when contracts come due. Um, if yeah, I mean, if he more, only buys a trademark and just decides to do an invasion angle... Then you're talking like everybody but about six or seven guys. Yeah. I want to get through these emails as quick as we can. Hopefully uh, this will slow down, but it probably won't for a while because there's so many questions. And um, thank you for all your questions. So Tony goes, if it weren't for TNN picking up ECW, do you think it would still be around? No, because if TNN had not picked up ECW, it would not have um, survived before. They were on the verge of bankruptcy, and it was TNN that actually saved them and gave them an extra year. And he goes, to me, TNN did everything in their power to sink them. Um, TNN did nothing to help ECW in the long run, uh, long run, other than give them an extra year. But to say they did everything in their power to sink them, I mean, Brian, I, I don't know. Why I, I don't would they do that? I don't know that TNN, TNN actually did anything to sink them whatsoever, other than, you know, there was obviously a period where they were not going to promote them too hard because they were going after the WWF, but they didn't overtly try to, you know. So they were doomed when when, when that negotiation started. They were doomed because they were going to be kicked off. Of, you know, Pauly, see, the thing that you got to understand, okay, Pauly is a very, very smart guy. He's one of the smartest guys that I know in this business. And when he recognized that TNN was pining for the WWF, and he knew it before anyone else, he created this angle because he knew he, he knew as soon as the WWF got on TNN, he was a goner. Okay, and therefore he needed an explanation on why he was a goner. So he created the storyline, and then people thought that the storyline was real, and it was not real. And Paul went everywhere with it because it was a great excuse when they got kicked off to blame TNN for all their problems in case they didn't get on another network. That's what happened. Now, TNN, you know, could have promoted them harder. Of course they could have, okay? But once they were going to get WWF, it wasn't in the cards. Why were we going to promote something that you know is a lame duck show? It's an unfortunate part of the television business. But again, and uh, seriously, you know, promotion is only going to take you so far. I mean, look at the XFL. I mean, promotion took them real far. That NBC promoted that thing like crazy. And then WF after that, it meant nothing because people didn't want to watch the show. And then the other thing also is, is you know, a lot of people blame TNN's lack of promotion uh, for for uh, the rating not growing. But you know what? TBS had wrestling now for 29 years until this week, and up until probably the last six or seven years, maybe even less than that, maybe 
since Bischoff came along, maybe around 96, 95, maybe when Nitro started, they never promoted wrestling. Wrestling was this thing on the schedule that they knew would always draw good ratings, but they never called attention to it because the wrestling fans found it and were going to show up. And it did remarkable ratings with no promotion at all. That's always what wrestling's thing is. So to say, well, they didn't promote it, it's like up until a few years ago, nobody ever did. It's like Vince's excuse right now with the XFL and the media. Yeah. It's These something are all that excuses. somewhere down the road when the XFL fails, we're going to be getting these emails going, why didn't the media promote the XFL more? Because it might have been a success. Yeah. Uh, it goes to the, the failure of the XFL, I feel, only locks, locks Vince into wrestling and maybe ultimate fighting. I, 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 don't, I tell you what, I don't see Vince going into ultimate fighting. No. There was a period where I know he wanted to, and but he hasn't even talked about it with anyone in, in a long time. And it might have been a good idea at one point. might still be a good idea. Uh, might cause something more closely approximating his expertise. Um, people think uh, people I think now see him as having a talent with sideshow acts, but not with real sports. It was wouldn't this be a great time for USA to jump in with Eric to give WCW time on the USA Network? Do you think w USA will be looking for this chance? I got to read you something. Uh, it's right around here about that actually. Where is it? It's a TV Guide quote. Um, da, 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 da. This is a TV Guide quote by Barry Diller, the head of USA Network, about wrestling fans. Quote, that audience of 12 to 19-year-old pimply-faced, mean-spirited males came, watched, and went on to whatever god-awful other pursuits after the show was over. Okay, what does that say about the WCW chances of getting on that network? Uh, i tell you what, what well, has happened... right, they did go after the show was gone. That's right. You that's know what has happened? I want to tell you something. What has happened, you know that... that Seen and maybe a lot of people who are wrestling fans don't understand this, is that when people in the general public hear and see that Trish Stratus thing last night and see not Vince but the crowd, a lot of networks will look at that and go, "I don't care what kind of ratings that is. We don't want that crap on the air." And who cares about that audience? I mean, that's that's really what happens, and that's we are all paying for that right now because nobody want you know I don't say nobody because somebody may touch it, but. The top guys, like USA Network, that made money on wrestling for years and years and years, they won't touch this thing. Turner, who made money on wrestling for years and years and years, they don't care. You know, it's not a ratings thing why this thing's getting dropped. It's because people see that audience when they watch on TV and their behavior and think that they're what they are. They, they, they come up, get, get a perception of what they are. It may be unfair, but that's what's killing, that's what's killed wrestling this week, is that perception. It's not the ratings. The ratings aren't that bad that would have killed it. It's the perception of what wrestling fans are. It's probably really unfair, but unfortunately, the you know the behavior of a lot of them. God, it's just so sad because it's again it's the minority, probably like that. Um, let's go to uh, PJ in Phoenix. PJ, what's going on? What's going on, Dave? I got a question and a comment. Okay. Um, is it true that Scott Hall will be wrestling John Tenta in his wrestling promotion? I believe so. I believe he's wrestling for John Tenta. I'm not sure if it's against John Tenta. I think or not. it's John Tenta in the main event with the uh, wrestling school on the line. The first Scott Hall. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. Well then, then for sure. And is it true that the Outsiders might re reunite in, uh, at that uh, pro, uh, promotion down in Florida? They're saying Nash will be there, so. <laughs> That's possible then. Really? And when did Hogan's contract uh, run out with WCW? I think it was last week. Oh. Actually, not even last week. I shouldn't say that. I think it was like two or three days ago. I thought it was year 2002. No, I think it was March 15, 2001 was really? the date I had heard. All right, thanks. And WCW sucks. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to say wow. it after next Monday. This is from John Molinero, who goes, I interviewed the Hardys on Saturday uh, at the off-the-record taping. They said they were going to be doing a tables, ladders, and chairs match at WrestleMania with Dudley's and Edge and Christian. So, And then Angle said he would like to face Benoit. Well, I think we've mentioned Actually, we haven't mentioned it. Angle is going to face Benoit. I think that one's a given now. Uh, oh, man, i got to say something, by the way. Uh, they sent me the uh, Kurt Angle is True video, and I watched the whole thing. And um, Kurt Angle is so awesome. I mean, they had so much footage from the from just like the very beginning. I mean, his first match, his debut, the promos that he cut back then. I mean, obviously not as good as they are now, but, I mean, from day one, I can't see how anybody could have seen this guy and not gone. This guy's going to be huge. He really? is so great. Wow. The one thing about the video, though, was, and he talked about this in his uh, his press conference or conference call or whatever he goes, I thought it would be fun because normally when they do these videos, they talk to the people out of character. He goes, I thought it would be fun to be in character during this entire video. So he doesn't break character or anything like that. And 
I think that for like 95% of WWF wrestlers, it would be so annoying. But he is so funny, and he is such a good actor that it's actually entertaining. So, there you go. See, Will. A lot of questions on, like, will WCW bring guys back? Again, I don't know of anyone. It says Juventud Guerrero. I would think that that's not even in their thought process. No. Bret Hart has retired. Hulk Hogan, I don't know. He goes, they should do a Four Horsemen reunion. That's not going to happen either. Uh, is it possible that Eric Bischoff might try to convince New Japan to buy? The problem, again, it's not its not the, the idea you can't get the money. It's like if New Japan buys and they have no TV, what, what's the point of that? Yeah, what do they have? You, you, you got, I, mean, I mean, and if he can get the TV, I'm not saying he can't, but he's got to do it like in a day, I mean, or, or in two or three days, and it's just its going to be tough. I mean, maybe he'll go on TV tonight and say, oh, I got the TV, but um, if he did, you know, it's that'd be, uh, be quite a coup if he did. I'll put it that way. Let's go to Steve in New York. Steve, what's going on? How are you doing? Hey. I'm doing really good. Um, I just wanted to address the fact that um, I think that Angle's, the push that he's getting now is um, going to be bad for his career in the long run. Because Why it seems to me that he's getting um, Ken Shamrock's gimmick and push, and that didn't work for him very well. And, yeah, um, Ken Shamrock, though. He's, he's, he's a lot better than Ken Shamrock, though. Oh, no, he's a lot better than Ken Shamrock. It's just that the reason I think that um, Ken didn't get over was because they never let him be anyone big or snap anyone's leg with his ankle lock, and we haven't seen Angle um, do that with the ankle lock, and I don't really see any of those top guys uh, letting him do that. And when you have a submission as your finisher, um, if and someone doesn't lay down for it and sell it really well, um, then it's not going to get over, and subsequently you're not going to get over. Uh, if the top guys at some point, the one, I mean, they, they did have, you know, the, one of the things to try to get that thing over last week is they had rock tap for it, even though it was in the ropes. But you're right, if, if people don't, when, when you come to the point where he puts that ankle lock on, a top guy and nobody reacts, which did happen at one point when Benoit with a cross face for a while, um, yeah, they, they better start, they, they better get, yeah, they better get someone to tap or you're right, that's what'll happen. I just think that the, the only way that they're gonna get, um, angle with his submission finisher over, is if not, if instead of Austin hurting Rock or um, sending Rock away, after WrestleMania have Angle um, break Rock's leg. He's got to go well, away anyway. I, 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 think, I think that they can't do that because everyone knows Rock's doing the movie and they don't want to do that kind of an angle. They may, I mean, but they may. But I, I, don't, I, just, I just sense that they think everyone knows, so why even do it? And plus, I don't know how much TV Rock's ever going to miss. Um, I mean, they really... I mean, he, won't, he may not be there every week for TV, and he won't be doing house shows for, you know, a while. But I know that they want, you know, they want him on every pay-per-view. If you can fall off a crane in a car and only sustain cuts and bruises, I think you can come back for every pay-per-view with a broken leg. <laughs> <laughs> they could have him wrestle with a cast on his leg. It's really great. Let's go though. back to that. Um, tough. La last week, um, when you had Luthez on, mm -hmm. I thought the show was okay, except for the fact that Someone called and mentioned Shawn Michaels, and he said that he thought that Shawn Michaels was the best ever. I'm not the biggest Shawn Michaels fan of all, but I, I, I recognize that he was a great wrestler and he was a great showman. And I really didn't like Fez looking down at him and asking that snotty question, well, was he ever a real, legit wrestler? And you were like, no, he was just a really great showman. And a really, and he's like, um, well, he, right, he couldn't wrestle a real match or he couldn't fight a real match. And I didn't really, um, I didn't really like Fez saying that, especially when... Um, you know, it, it, it's fixed. Yeah, I mean, that's, do you think that no one knows? Uh, yeah, unfortunately for, for Lou, what has become his gimmick is the idea of, I was a real wrestler, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's like his calling card. And Lou, Lou Fez was a real wrestler, but the bottom line is, is that it was still worked pro wrestling that he excelled at and that he was a star in. And it's worked differently now than it was in his day, but it still worked. It's kind of like... Um, it was that weird question when we asked him about, um, you know, you made that list of wrestlers and you didn't put, put Ric Flair on the list, and he just goes, well, Ric Flair did some amateur, but uh, that was it. And then he just, that was it, he just brushed it off. Yeah, but he put he put other guys on the list, you know, like Gorgeous George. And, you know, not that Gorgeous George couldn't wrestle at all, but, you know, Gorgeous George was certainly not a, you know, Gorgeous George, you know, was a star because he was a, a showman, you know, mm -hmm. not, not for anything that he could do as a wrestler or even as a worker. I mean, Gorgeous George was not a great worker for his time. Gorgeous George was just like a, a great personality for a couple of years when television hit. Um, Rick Skaya was on a, a, a local radio show here in New York, and the host asked him, um, hey, we should start a wrestling company. Do you want to be the brains behind it? Now, going back two years after Kevin Nash um, turned uh, WCW from 
the number one company to the number two company with a few problems but still salvageable. They hire you and Brian, Wade Keller, Scott Keith, Jeff Merrick, Rick Skaya, and the rest of and the rest of the journalists for um, wrestling. What would you guys do? Kill each other. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I wrote an article in September '99, um, very detailed on what I would do, um, and it's just mainly the logical stuff. Basically, rebuild rebuild the belt as uh-huh. your prime cornerstone. Um, separate the junior heavyweights from the heavyweights. Um, you know, you know, build it around. I, I don't, you know, I don't even remember all the stuff because it was it was eighteen, you know, eighteen months ago. It seems like years ago. But basically, put some credibility back into the belts mm-hmm. as the key building block, and then every top guy that that was there then has to pick a guy. Okay, that was there then would have to pick a guy, and it's like this is the guy who I am going to make a star. If you do not agree to do that and you do not make him a star, you're fired. That's it. Sort of like no, nobody over 40, we are building for the future of this company. Nobody over 40 is the future, not Ric Flair, is, even though he was the biggest ratings throughout the time, not Kevin Nash, not Sting. If you, and I would go at the very first meeting to those guys, if you do not want to build somebody and recognize that your role in this company now is to build for the future, and you do not want to do that, please go home and, and don't ruin my life. And if you want to come here and build somebody like, like Wahoo McDaniel did for Ric Flair, then... Um, you are so welcome, and we will love you. And, and in the and in the end, you know you're going to keep yourself a star if you have a great program with another guy. But you have to elevate him. If you're if you're keeping yourself over, not elevating him, I don't want you around. And then I would find young guys uh, that were. And they had them. You know, they had the young guys. They still had Benoit. They still had Jericho as, yeah. as two examples. And those would be the kind of guys that I would go with and mix them with the top guys and hope that you know, like Ric Flair, obviously can stay over by, by losing, and hopefully these other guys would learn how to do that and. Uh, See what would happen from there. You know, it's just you still had Bret Hart, you still had Goldberg as a phenomenon. There was a lot of tools that were still there. I have no doubt that that thing in late '99 could have been turned around to where it would have been a profitable company. I'm not saying beat Vince McMahon, but it would have been a profitable company. And what they did, um, what Russo did, was largely the opposite. And um, you know, <laughs> and, and and that was the that was the end result. Uh, I always said I always believe that I believe Kevin Nash. Was just as big a um, just a bit as big a um, a detriment to the company as Vince Russo was. And listen to me out for a second. Just because when Vince Russo came, it was sagging. When Kevin Nash came, it was soaring. Kevin Nash took something that was going up and made it come down. Vince Russo took not, something not that up, was going was starting down to struggle. and made it go down it, lower. Okay, it was starting to struggle under Nash, but Nash, you know what? It went. Nash did more damage. Um, in, in a sense, as far as killing the momentum of it, absolutely, than Russo did. Russo took a product. But when Russo came in, mm-hmm. people were ready for this thing to turn around. You could tell the momentum in the audience, everything. When Russo came in the first time, it was like, okay, we had, we had some bad time. Now we're ready to turn around. And then when he didn't, that really hurt. But, but Nash, Nash did do tremendous damage. I think that Russo's first reign did damage. And even then, it was still salvageable. Russo's second reign was what gutted it. That's, that's my opinion. I like that, that, that was just that was just disastrous. That everyone got injured as soon as he started to push them. What with Russo? Yeah, no, he had Russo. really bad luck that first reign. Then he went crazy a second one. Yeah. Well, the um, the one who had the bad luck with the injuries, and it wasn't even all real injuries because guys just did it with Sullivan because so many of the guys they made a terrible decision going with Sullivan because the guys wanted him to fail and they were all working for him to fail and the guys were faking injuries to, so so he wouldn't book them. And then Sullivan had nothing to work with. The guys weren't faking injuries under Russo. A lot of the, the guys were for Russo. I mean, Russo did have his bad luck with the injuries, but also mm-hmm. um, with with Russo, some of the injuries were based on on the idea that he didn't really understand what wrestlers could and couldn't do, like the Jarrett thing, taking the splash off the cage from Jimmy Snuka. I mean, that injury was something that shouldn't have been done. Goldberg, you know, granted that was partially his fault too. But you, I mean, wh- what was the purpose of that bashing in the limo anyway? Exactly. Million dollar town, you know, you're and you're ba- you're having him punch out a limo. I mean, even if he used a pipe, he could have cut himself up. And granted, I know Undertaker just did it, but why why do it? That's stupid. Well, all right, that's all I got. You you two uh, be good and uh, see you well. Okay, uh, that is pretty much it. And I want to I want to thank everyone for calling in and uh, writing in. Uh, I'm sorry we didn't get to everyone. Um, huge response today. Uh, tonight we will see on Nitro exactly what is happening and. Talk about Raw. We'll be here tomorrow at 5 to sort all of this out.